Hey, what's the matter? Well, where's the picture? Then we fade into a scene in which we see the car coming around a fast curve. And then... Hey, Carl, where's the picture? The picture? Why, we're still working on it. That is to say, we're rewriting it for the 15th time. I'm just dictating the final scenes to my secretary. Well, it's a little late, isn't it? We're all sitting out here in the audience waiting to see a movie of the new car in action. Well, I'll tell you how it is. When I was first assigned to write this picture, my boss called me into his office and he said, now, the main purpose of this movie is to demonstrate the great performance qualities of the 1953 Dodge. We'll really put it through its paces, show the audience just what she'll do when it comes to acceleration, roadability, rideability, steering, uh, braking power, everything that makes the new Dodge the most exciting new car of the year. Swell. Look, why don't we start with a stunt driver? Maybe he's an ex-race driver and he... No, no, stunt stuff is out. Show how the car performs with any driver. Give it a simple storyline, but keep it full of action and excitement. Right. Make it snappy, we got a tight deadline. Well, as soon as possible, I arranged for Pat, my secretary, and me to be present during one of the engineering test runs out in the country. Of course, that took some doing, too, because the new car was still very much in the confidential stage, and all identification marks were masked. That's what I call a beautiful car. Would I love to own one like that? Well, it isn't on the market yet. Hasn't even been announced to the public. Now, I'm here to get some first-hand information for the movie, and you're here to take notes during the ride. Take notes while we're riding? That won't be hard to do. This car rides as smoothly as a cloud. You mean I can ride while the car is moving? You sure can. The combination of the new suspension system, the wider frame, the new steering system, plus our famous Auroflow shock absorbers mean you won't have any trouble. Make a note of those things, will you? Shall we go? Anytime. When it comes to styling, this is simply beautiful. Look at this. Say, this is a stunning interior. Say, Pat, make a note about these comfortable knee-level seats. And all the headroom, too. Well, let's go. <clears throat> now, this particular car is equipped with a new torque converter. That's gyro torque drive to you. The only time you have to use the clutch is when you first set the transmission in driving range. From then on, all you have to do is regulate the gas and steer till the end of the ride. Make a note of that too, will you, Pat? How about it? Isn't this a smooth riding car? Gonna be able to read your notes? We eventually took the tape off the car so as not to attract attention and continued our demonstration ride. It not only sold us on the car, but the way it performed gave me what I thought was a swell idea around which to base the movie. First of all, when you ride in the 53 Dodge, you get a wonderful sensation of pent-up power. The driver would just touch his foot to the accelerator and the car would literally leap into high-speed action. Boy, what a thrill. Once, just for the heck of it, the driver gave us a special demonstration to show exactly what she could do when it came to getaway. Could fly into action from a standing start. This car is so packed with power that, believe it or not, the wheels actually spun on the road. To me, that was darned impressive. Of course, nobody recommends that you spin your tires in jackrabbit starts in normal driving. But it's nice to know that the power is there when you want it or need it. That same thing holds true when it comes to speed. No one would suggest that a car be driven at top speed. But again, just to show us what she'd do, our driver gave us a demonstration. And can that 53 Dodge hug the highway? Even at high speed and on gravel, too. Actually, it's what the engineers call directional stability. Again, it's the result of a combination of suspension, shock absorbers, and the steering mechanism. 
Yes, sir, when it comes to action-packed performance, this 53 Dodge really has it. Well, as I said, as a result of this demonstration ride, I dreamed up a honey of an idea to dramatize the car's performance features. You've seen high goal, fast action polo when it's played by men and horses who know the game. It has everything. Talk about speed, horsepower in action, maneuverability, and live power under perfect control. You sure see it all in a top-notch polo game. Well, my idea was to take this power-packed, fast-action 53 Dodge out to the polo field one day, and with the help of Jack Ivory, the international polo star, prove its outstanding performance in a demonstration with a highly trained polo pony. To me, it was a good example of power in action, but under perfect control. A polo pony is always alert, ready to take off like the well-known bat out of you know where. And when it comes to acceleration from a standstill, the 53 Dodge certainly fits that description to a T. And what's more, you don't need spurs. A good polo pony is equipped with plenty of speed. He has to be to stay in the game. As we well know, the 140 horsepower Red Ram engine is certainly packed with punch. To me, another perfect comparison was braking power. Just a slight pull on the reins and that's it. Now the light touch on the foot pedal and the big Dodge brakes bring the car to a safe, sure, straight stop. Of course, one of the best features to talk about is the well, nimbleness of the polo horse. They twist, turn, and really get around that field. Just as maneuverable and as sure-footed as, as well, a ram. There isn't a car I know that can outmaneuver the 53 Dodge with its new steering mechanism and its roll-resisting ride. The new Dodge is the very symbol of sure-footed safety. Star polo players like Jack Ivory and the completely trained horses they ride are perfect examples of absolute coordination between man and mount. The well-trained polo horse is always ready, willing, and able to instantly respond to the rider's every wish. It's a terrific combination. And when you drive a 53 Dodge, the combination of manpower and 140 horsepower can be an even more perfect example of complete coordination. With a car that, too, is ready, willing, and tremendously able to constantly respond to the driver's every wish. And when it comes to beauty, streamlined, clean-lined beauty, well, there just isn't anything more to be said, because... Carl, you're right. You mean you like the idea? You'll buy the script? No, it won't work. The idea of comparing a car to a horse. Well, I wasn't trying... I mean, I didn't oh, think... It, it won't do. Try again. If you want to make a performance comparison, use another automobile, not a horse. So I started all over again. This time, the idea was to find a place where we could not only demonstrate, but measure the new car performance features. Our first test was for getaway. I knew it was faster than last year's Dodge, but I didn't know how much faster. So I wanted to start out with a point-to-point -point dash. A hundred yards seemed like a good distance, so that was it. The 53 Dodge and its power-packed Red Ram engine won that one by more than two lengths. But as the engineers pointed out, fast action starts as such don't mean a thing. Smooth starts are not only safer, but more comfortable too. The purpose of extra horsepower is to provide additional safety. For example, when passing on the highway. The engineers suggested that we demonstrate this safety feature on the highway. I proposed that we set up a measured course and dramatize the test by having the cars pass a truck in a way that often happens on the road. So that's how we set it up. Markers were placed 100 feet apart so that we could measure the great superiority of the 53 Dodge over the 52. 
First, we used the 52 model. The truck was to be driven at the rate of 35 miles an hour. To pull out of line and pass a vehicle comfortably and safely at that speed requires a distance of about 600 feet. Let's see what happens. The 52 car passes the truck and gets back in line in 550 feet. Plenty of margin for safety. All right, I know you're not supposed to pass unless the road's clear, but I want to use an oncoming car to give the scene a little drop. Now we're going to repeat the same scene with the 53. When you get the signal to pass at the zero point, tramp on it. Ready up there? Don't come too fast, just a steady 35 miles an hour. Now our oncoming car gets started to portray a typical situation. Hey, stop that guy, that's not a test car. Wow, thank heaven for that extra power under the Dodge hood. It made it in a shade over 300 feet. Brother, that was too close, but he made it. Okay, I'm sorry, we'll go back to the airport and work under conditions we can control from the standpoint of safety. The next test I wanted was a brake test. I'd seen an ad in which someone had said the 52 Dodge had the best brakes they ever tested to date. And in the movie, I wanted to say, boy, what a car. She'll go better than 100 and stop on a dime. Of course, as I soon found out from the engineers, I couldn't use an expression like that in the movie. Why? Because as the chief engineer on our crew said, the car will do everything the ad says, but any time this or any car will stop on a dime, it's because it hit a stone wall or another car coming at the same speed. Then, just to prove the point, they staged a little safety lesson, just for me. The idea was to give me a few facts about stopping a car at high speeds. We had two cars with brakes that were as perfect as possible. We had skilled drivers whose reaction time was normal. Each one could put his foot on the brake in just three quarters of a second after he passes the flag to stop, and that's normal. We had brand new tires and a dry pavement with some melting, slippery tar. We had better than average conditions, although the cars slid a little. But even under these conditions, here's what happens when a car is driven 70 miles an hour. the three quarters of a second it takes for normal reaction time, the car travels 77 feet. Then since braking distance increases as the square of the speed, 367.5 more feet are used up in bringing the car to a stop and still conform to the accepted standards. That's a total of 445 feet of travel. The 53 Dodge stopped in 241 feet or over 200 feet less than the required safety standards. But even so, it'd take a whale of a lot of dimes to measure 241 feet. Just thought you'd like to know why our movie doesn't say, she'll stop on a dime. But we had some other interesting tests. Now how about a ride test for steering or maneuverability? We'll set up an in and out obstacle course with some 40 odd tires. We'll see which car can make the course in the fastest, safest and smoothest time. All right, here comes the 52 Dodge. Hey, nothing wrong with the way that car gets around. Uh-oh, knocked over that marker. Time, 18.5 seconds on the nose. Now let's try the 53. Again, just to be fair, we'll use the same skill driver. Ready? Go. Boy, look at that car scoot around. The combination of the shorter wheelbase, extra visibility, and new steering hookup sure makes a big difference. The 53 Dodge made that little trip in only 14.5 seconds and without a fault. And here's something else worth noting. There wasn't too much roll. This course was set up for a race with the two cars in a fairly tight circle. The 53 had a handicap of a quarter lap. 
Everybody set? Let's go. The idea was for the 53 to catch the 52 in the slippery, narrow track without appreciably more roll or slide. The extra power, wider frame, the new front and rear suspension systems make the 53 Dodge a thrilling automobile. No fooling. And there's no fooling when it comes to the power that's packed in this new car. Just to prove its power, we rigged up a special train of cars, hooked them together, and then backed our 52 test car in to play locomotive. Of course, the car was well weighted down so the wheels wouldn't spin. You've got to have power to tow this train of 22 cars, the total weight of 40 tons. Let's see if it can do it. Well, she did it. Will it take two more? Not quite. Now let's try it with the Power Pack 53. And what's more, let's add at least 18 more cars, or 33 tons of weight. According to the engineering department, theoretically, the extra power built into the Red Ram engine plus the gyrotorque drive, the car should be able to pull the extra weight. Now let's see if the engineers were right. There she goes. Boy, does that red ram have pulling power. Ah, this script is more like it. It deals with the facts. Well, I'm glad you like it. Of course, what it needs is a good dramatic finish. The only thing is, can the new Dodge actually perform all the things you've described in here? Why, sure it can. As a matter of fact, we've even run some tests on film to prove it. I'd like to see it. Of course, the only way to really appreciate the 53 Dodge is to ride in it yourself. And that's the way I'd like to end the picture. Give everyone a ride in the new car. How would you do that? Well, like this. You represent the audience, see? Only in the picture you play the part of, well, say a cop, highway patrol. You're driving a 53 Dodge too, a four-door sedan. Suddenly, I come tearing by, going like mad, see? I'm also in a new Dodge. Well, you take off after me. Only you don't know who I am, see? I might even be an escaped convict or something. Anyway, you start to chase me, and the race is on. Actually, I'm on my way to a hospital in the next town with some special serum to save a sick child. It's a race against time, precious time. So I have to take shortcuts. And you stay right on my tail all the way.
then, after a terrific chase, you finally catch it. Of course, right away I explain who I am and what I'm doing. You know, the mission of mercy with the special serum? You know something, Carl? I agree. It's terrific. I'll buy it. You mean the script? The story? I'm talking about the car. Any car that can deliver that kind of performance is strictly the car for me in 53.